I'm Kenny Wallace, 41 years old, from St. Louis, Missouri. I drive the Stacker 2 Ford on the NASCAR Bush Series. I've been racing for 19 years. I have a new race team this year. It's PPC Racing. My sponsor, Stacker 2, was looking to make a move to win races. My goal is to get back to the way I was portrayed early in my career, which is a winner that won three races a year in the Bush Series and was always fighting for the championship. Driving the number 29, GM Goodwin Chevrolet, Kevin Harvick. I'm Kevin Harvick. I'm 29 years old from Bakersfield, California, driver of the number 29 GM Goodwrench Chevrolet, 2001 Bush Series champion and Nextel Cup Rookie of the Year. It's tough being a driver and uh, an owner. They're both rewarding in, in different ways. My truck team, they struggled and didn't win a race last year, so we made the change this year to Ron Hornaday driving the truck. And uh, our goals this year were set out to win our first race and contend for the championship. And driving the number six by Agra Ford, Mark Martin. I'm Mark Martin. I'm 46 years old, and I'm from Baseville, Arkansas. I race the Viagra Ford, and this is my last year in Nextel Cup racing. I really haven't felt emotional at all about this being my last year in Nextel Cup competition. I'm just charged up about going after this championship. It's very important to me to be able to go out on top of my game. We just came out of Vegas where we finished 23rd, which was absolutely horrible. But now we're headed to Atlanta. I used to absolutely dread Atlanta. The last push race at Atlanta, we finished seventh. So I look forward to going there all the time. The Atlanta Motor Speedway is one of the best racetracks we run on. What we really need to focus on is no mistakes in the pits and no mistakes on the racetrack. Fire them up. Hasn't been very good to us over the last couple of years. We haven't have run that well, and so hopefully we can turn our luck around this week. Reach up there and pull those belts tight one more time. Green, 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 green. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing. It's her turn to clean that and that. And all them floor, all the clothes in there are her fault. What do you guys do? Just come in here in the morning like this and go boom! It's like army warfare in here. My dad's crazy. He's fun to be around. My dad's sense of humor is good when you're having a bad day. And, you know, he'll always, you know, put a smile on your face. You're so sarcastic. What did you say? You're so sarcastic. Yeah, but, honey, I love you. Brooke, Brandy, and Brittany are daddy's girls. They're spoiled, but... They know when it's time to play and when it's time to be serious. And if, if they want that car, if they want that cell phone, they got to be good kids. I tell you what, let me just put gas in your car and I'll come right back up. All right, there you go. All right. Brooke Wallace! Brooke, you drive every vehicle. She's got every vehicle out of gas, all of them. Where are you going? We got to push it down to the gas thing. Brooke is 18, graduating high school you know, trying to figure out what she wants out of her life. I ran two cars out of the gas in three days. I would say that this is the biggest turning point in my life, just for the fact that it was just like yesterday when Brooke was two years old. I can't believe this. She runs everything out of gas. It's crazy. Oh, here's the hard part. Use the brake! Okay. 
My dad is very sentimental about me growing up. He always makes sure to tell me that I can always hang around the house as long as I want because he doesn't want me leaving. And if it was up to him, I'd stay young forever. Did you have it planned like this? No, I didn't know it was going to run out of gas completely. Oh, my gosh. Right now, I'm just worried to death. I'm a dad, and I know what's coming up. And saying, OK, uh, Brooke, are you OK? You know, should we put you on the pill? Oh, uh, no, Dad. Oh, my God. I can't believe you just said that. You know, <laughs> so Brooke right now is almost a grown up, and that's really hard on me. I think I'm just going to marry a professional athlete. Yeah. You can do that. Your mother did that. Mad. Let's talk about Bronson just a minute. Yeah. Remember, uh, remember turn one and two, how you got to do that, how you got to go up and then cut back across the apron? Yeah, that's, that's the best part of the track. Yeah, that's, that's the cool part. Fun. All right, you guys ready to load up? Matt is my son. He's 13 years old. Matt races uh, the Fast Car Pro Truck Series, and he is uh, everything to me. Gosh, and all the sides, it's duct taped. And <laughs> Yeah, said, this thing seen some action, hasn't it? Yeah, it's, it's kind of beat up. I don't know if Matt shares my passion for racing yet. I mean, I started when I was 15, and that was considered young at the time. Matt's been racing since he's seven. He has a lot of time to decide what he wants to do with his life. How many people are going to be there? I don't know. I hope there's a lot of them. <laughs> That's more trucks to pass. And more lap cars. Yeah. <laughs> About my dad retiring, I think it'll be pretty cool for me because I'll get to be with him more, and he'll be able to come to all my races. Um, just be able to spend more time with me. We're ready to go, Matt. Where's those cookies? What cookies? Did you eat them all, Miss Piggy? All. The whole plate full. There wasn't a whole plate full, Kevin. There was probably 30 of them. I had some. No, you ate them all. I didn't eat them all. Well, who ate them all? Did the cookie ghost come and get him? Come on, Sam. Come over here. The cookie thief came last night, Sam. Kevin's sense of humor is very off the wall, is very sarcastic, just like mine. We're big smart asses. You have a dog. Hello. Come here. She's probably taking a crap somewhere. I think the dog is beyond spoiled. It's like our child. It's got its own clothes. Pretty much has the, the run of the motorhome, the house. It gets what it wants and when it wants it. You do realize that we're going to have to do a sweep of the whole house for crap when they show this house. Do you think that'd be an added selling feature? Poop? They're that big. How would you feel if you were looking at a house to buy it and you saw a little poop slant? Like... Yeah? How would you feel? Like I needed to clean the carpet. I wouldn't feel good about it. If she could clean up her own poop, she'd be the ticket. She'd be the best animal in the world. Brand, why don't you go try your prom dress on for Dad? Brandy in a dress. I can't wait. Put your shoes and everything on, Brand. Brandy is grown up. She is really into shoes and clothes. And she said, Dad, I want to show you my prom dress. I'm like, OK. Let me see. Oh, my Lord. Jeez. Look at you. Yay! You look good, Brand. Twirl around right there. Looks good. God, you look beautiful. Can I get Oh, my gosh. Come here. Turn uh -huh. around. You look beautiful. Thanks. That's my daughter. Give me a hug. <coughs> you look good. <laughs> you look good, Brandon. I'm proud of you. Wow, can you believe that? Like 16 going on 25. <laughs> Brooke has decided not to go to the prom because she is in so much love with her boyfriend, David. He's in the Air Force, and he's in Cheyenne, Wyoming. And they've been dating for like, gosh, maybe five months. I bet if David was here, If he was go. here, she'd probably go. There's he was going to wear his uniform to the prom with her. But oh, that would be, he that'd be like officer and a gentleman. I know. I, it sort of is an officer and a gentleman story, I think. Be 
beat that three truck. And you can probably beat some of them other guys too. They're all really, really fast, and I'm going to be proud of you no matter what happens. Like, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to drive the fool out of it tonight. Them boys is tough. This year, Matt is racing against the adults. More trucks, more competition. So, I wanted, I wanted to keep him challenged. He's taking it, isn't he? Thanks. I knew when Mark got ready to retire that I would be ready. And that was one thing about Matt racing. I thought, oh, I have to go through this again, you know, start all over. But he ends up wanting to do that as he gets even older. You know, I'll be happy for him. I want him to do what he wants to do. Get up on that wheel and show him how it's done. First reaction when I saw Matt wreck was I couldn't figure out what happened because Matt doesn't spin out. He never spins. Okay, uh, we need to see the front end there. It looks uh, pretty bad on the right front. What I was incredibly impressed with was he said, maybe I just spun out. One of the greatest qualities of any person is to be able to take the blame for something even when it might not even be their fault and that made me so proud of him that's good to hear a nice round of applause right young man Matt Martin surely disappointed at the effort tonight but it's good to see that young man is okay I don't know how that guy hit me you know he saw me <laughs> I know I thought she's gonna be all right Get to restart in the back. He was putting on a show. I hate it that he went out. You were really doing good. If he ever decides that he wants to race NASCAR against the best of the best, he'll be prepared for it. That's all right. Oh, killer. That's your backpack? Take gloves. If I'm going somewhere where I have to have clothes that match, usually Delano packs my bag because, um, you know, I, I'll just, I'll put whatever on. Camo? I prefer not. But Kevin wants me to pack for him. I'm not his mother. I'm not packing his clothes. I'm not doing that, and he knows that, but he'll wait till the very last minute. Where's my bag? Did you pack it? No. Do you have a dog? It's in the bag. Oh. This pink bag, don't I? Yep. I'm like your bitch. Hmm. <laughs> but not really. Don't hit that hole. What hole? What are you talking about? That one. You run off in the ditch every time in my car. I may dip a wheel off here and there. Right in my car. Oh, is that a puddle? Don't do it. Please. It's an accident. I'm just making sure your wheel wells are clean. Don't run into mud. I hate it when Kevin drives my car because I'm a car fanatic. I want my car spotless. I don't want to damage it. I don't want to have anything happen to it. And Kevin, he didn't. He could care less. And he knows it makes me, it makes me mad. And if that's what he can do to make me mad that day, he's gonna do it. See? There's Red. asphalt there. It's like on the racetrack. If there's asphalt. You can race there. Spruce Creek is paradise. That's home. That's where I'm from. It is a fly-in community with its own runway. For someone who flies, it is a dream come true. How much do I have to take for you two? 
at Cessna Aircraft Company, mm -hmm. and the initial deposit's $100,000. Can I put a couch in there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, and uh, a limited supply of Cheetos and everything. Right, right. He loves a couch, man. He Why don't just... we take it to that shop where they pimp my ride and we can get it all dressed up for Yeah, you. that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. We're, we're really excited. So I decided to order a Citation CJ2 Plus, which is a single pilot jet. I became a multi-engine instrument rated pilot in less than one year from the day I took my first lesson to flying off in the sunset in my own Citation by myself without a babysitter. Unreal. I'm more excited now than I was already when I wrote the check. If I go on a family vacation or anything else, leaving the pilot at home and being able to do the job myself is really important to me. We took Brooke to Atlanta because she was dearly missing her boyfriend, David. And she's like, oh yeah, I'd like to go. Well, in reality, we were spoofing her. We, uh, we had her boyfriend waiting for her in Atlanta, so it was a pretty big surprise for her. Uh, look, hold on. He's in the Air Force, and she's in love. I don't know if he's the one, only she'll know that, but um, we both really, really like him. He's a sweetie, though. understand how important it is for me too and they spend a lot of money on plane tickets and everything so it means a lot to me when they do that because that it's easier for me to have a relationship especially with someone that lives in a completely different state than me oh that was priceless Right at 51. 51 acres. This will be the first house that we've ever built together. And we just wanted something that was totally ours and instead of just living in a, a regular track home or, or something that somebody else designed and somebody else built. And it's everything that we've ever wanted in a house. Kitchen, we redid the whole kitchen area. Oh, you can skip layout. the kitchen. Because <laughs> we know you're such the gourmet cook. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin and I are hand in hand involved with the design of the new house. I just want some peace and quiet and to be able to walk outside without people driving by my house or if I want to take the dogs out in my robe then I can do that. I just want some privacy and that's been hard for us to get. In the master bedroom you requested that we do an oversized bed. With as many animals as we have and between he and I, I mean we're in a king bed we're still a little cramped. We have the two cats and the little dog, and the big dog sleeps down at the side of my bed. What we've done in the new house, we've had a bed custom made um, that's, I think, two feet bigger than a California king, so everyone will have room in this bed. We can now get, I think, what you're going to love for a long yeah. time. Didn't sleep last night. Good. Woke up 2 o'clock worrying about what it's going to do next year. <laughs> I guess that's the first. It probably won't be the last. I just want to simplify my life. It continues to get more complicated every year and more difficult to manage. Hey, Dad, when you retire, what's the first thing you're going to do? Watch TiVo? Hang out with you. 
After my dad retires, I bet you the first few weeks he'll be fine, but then he's gonna have to find something to do. Cause he's just gonna get bored. I mean, TiVo is cool, but it's not that cool. That's, Man. That's his mom made you fries. Yeah. Golly, what a special treat. What I'm looking forward to the most in his retirement is for him to have more time to be at home so we can do things that we haven't gotten to do uh, nearly the whole time we've been married. Calamari's awesome. What is calamari? I've had two pieces. Squid. There's just a lot of things in life that I want to do that I haven't done and I'll never be able to do as long as I'm tied up chasing this next tail cup. It was so sweet when I, I, when I see you, you guys, you're just loving each other like you guys are already married. Oh. Kim? It got cold. What? Kimberly, do you love me? Very much. You can give me a kiss? I already did. Yeah, you did. Yeah. David, give me a drink. What do you want? Please. Oh, like a photo. She's, right? she's cracking the whip already on him. I did not do nothing, Dad, no. It's all right. No. I did, too. Your mother. And look how he turned out. Brooke and David really remind me of Kim and I. You know, Kim and I fell in love at 18, 19 years old. We were in high school. Brooke's still in high school, and uh, I just look at them, too, and then I, it reminds me of what we went through. Brooke, you know what? Since you're my daughter, it's just... I know normal people just let it go, but that was so neat last night. What? You really love him. Dad, can you just stop with that grill? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's funny. She does. I don't know. Dad. I'm sorry. She's so shy. Like, Brooke, tell me you love me. Say, I love you, Dad. No, Dad, you... I really can't. She's like, Dad... She's so shy. Uh... <laughs> You know when you know when you said, you know, Dad, when you said that uh, you love me, then then I mean that too. <laughs> Brooke is so shy that she hardly wants to do things around me that she thinks might embarrass herself. And you know, she puts her arm around him, they hug. I can't imagine anything splitting them up, but they just are so much in love. Two peas in a pod. Atlanta. I went from practice and qualifying in a cup car and took my driver's hat off and put my owner's hat on and, and went and sat on a pit box and that was the first time I was able to do that all year. Our first full season, I mean, we don't, we didn't have anything to complain about, uh, but we didn't win a race and, and we felt like, um, you know, we had several opportunities to do that. You ready there, Grandpa? Wait, yeah. Have fun. I don't know if I can go up the middle on this one. It's a little tight getting one. It's about three quarters of the way up. Uh, racetrack the groove is. Ron Hornaday is the reason that that I am where I'm at. I slept on his couch for you know probably six or eight months before I had anywhere to live and when I was able to give Ron the opportunity to drive my truck it was really cool for me. Good luck. Race for the lead. Three wide. Three wide going into turn three. Ron Hornaday on the inside is going to take the top spot. Harvick, owner of this truck, decided, I need to make a change. I want to see this truck win. He wants that truck in victory lane. And Ron Hornaday has just three laps to go to get to victory lane. We're here at Caution Flag. Railroads, Rick Crawford, and number 14, Sparks flying, and so the caution is going to fly, and it does fly prior to the white flag coming out, and so that means we will have a green, white, checkered finish. With all the cautions, it, it made it a little bit stressful, but the most nerve-wracking thing for me is, is definitely watching as an owner. You know, I'm used to having complete and total control of, of the situation on the racetrack and, and making, making my own decisions, and when you're sitting on the pit box, you don't, you don't have that luxury. All you can do is, is sit up there and watch. Side by side, coming out of turn number four, on the high side, Bobby Labonte may hit again. It's Bobby Labonte. I think you got it, Hornaday. 
made by about six inches. All I gotta say is, awesome job, man, awesome job. And look at the burnout. Ron Hornaday is showing to the crowd. What an unbelievable finish to this race. It was very rewarding for the truck team to win, just for the fact that, that you know, they struggled and didn't win a race last year. I was really proud of all the guys and everybody that we brought in this year. I was as excited for Ron as I was for myself and Delana, just knowing that he didn't have the year that he wanted over the last couple of years and to come in and, and win the third truck race and put all the critics and all the stuff that, that had been talked about to bed. It was really a good moment in, in my life. So what do we do? <laughs> Collect the check, take the trophy, and go to the next one. <laughs> Yesterday, as soon as we got done making that qualifying round, you know, it put the adjustments right back, and it was awesome in race mode. we got to get you in a position where you can win. We haven't done that with you yet. Well, I have a new race team this year. It's PPC Racing. The, the car owner is uh, Greg Pollux, fantastic car owner. Here's the situation. It's not an overnight thing. we got to get comfortable with your feedback. What does it really mean? You're the onboard computer can diagnose it. And I think when we yeah. start to get that, with all these other things, the shock guy, like the radiator, da da da, all the things we got going, we just constantly get better and better. Well, thanks for addressing everything this week. I like the way you're getting after it right away. What I like about Greg is that he really will pull the trigger. What I mean by that is if the car isn't running well, he'll go, what do we got to do to get better? He's a great delegator. The team is first class. You know, we're just off and rolling right now. Things are going good. OK, All right. let's do it. All right. Thanks, buddy. Michelle! <laughs> you can feel the tenseness, you know? Everybody's like, you know, the race is here. And I'm like, hey, chill out, it's just a race, you know. But on the inside, I'm like, oh, okay, the race is here, you know. Start your engine! Fire him up. I'm ready. Boogity, boogity, boogity! Let's go racing! The green flag dropped in Atlanta, and my car was real loose getting in the corner. I knew that I had to search out a different groove. And, and, and keep the car digging, keep it going. I couldn't stay real slow. I got some rubbers in the left rear if you want to do it early. Get it out of the way. I would say I need wedge in the left rear, something like that. Three, here we are. Put on the brakes straight ahead. We got lucky, got a caution. Crew Chief Wes Ward, you know, he made a couple of great decisions. My relationship with Wes is a good one, and what I like about it, he allows me to give him input. In Atlanta, we both gave good information. He helped me, I helped him. And then the track tightened up, it came to me, and I was able to race hard. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, 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 Atlanta was David's uh, first NASCAR race, so he had lots of questions. David would have liked to stayed out on pit road, and Brooke really just wanted to go back to the motorhome and hang out. She's not ready to leave already. No, you're not leaving yet, though, are you? No, no. we'll wait till the front I won't let her leave. That would be really upset. I won't let her leave. <laughs> I love having Brooke at the Atlanta race. It's always important for me to refresh Brooke on what I'm doing. It's okay that she's preoccupied with David. I want her to be preoccupied with uh, her boyfriend, you know? Relationship is what me and my wife have, and if Brooke wants a relationship with her boy and she wants to hang out at the races, that's cool. We're good right now, boys. Am I wrong, guys? Sadler, who restarted second behind Neal, has dropped like a stone.
threat behind Kenny Wallace. You know, we kept making adjustments, and then we finally hit on something that made the car competitive. There were times I was running eighth to tenth, but when it all came down to it, it was a great race, and we were side by side at the end. The rookie from the pole, Carl Edwards. Come on, come on. You got it, Kenny. You got it, baby. You got it. Woo! That's the hardest 12th I believe I've ever worked for. We're not where we need to be, but I think we've gained a lot from Vegas. You know, I always want to run the top 10. Anything out of the top 10 kind of makes me a little crabby, but, you know, 12th was okay. <laughs> well, we had a good competitive run, and now we're back up to eighth in the points. We're headed to Nashville, and I see this team being really, really strong. I'm a mess. Old killer. Come here, love. She pooped. She pooped? Pooped. You want some dog? Mm. Are you still eating after you let her lick your fingers? Oh, yeah. What if she just licked her butt? I guess it'll taste like ass. How about getting her turd up? The unfortunate part about Lo, and God love her, she's fun to have, but she can't quite figure the potty training out yet. So a lot of times, whether you're in the house, you're in the motorhome, you're in the office, you'll find little presents everywhere. I better wash my hands. How about you pick up the turd? What turd? That big one that she did. <laughs> that's not big, that's a Tootsie Roll. Yeah, but it stinks. Oh my God, it's just a turd. Like you don't crap. is a very good father. He tries to do as much as he can with Matt and being as involved with Matt's life considering his occupation. <laughs> Best thing about my dad is he's just a real cool guy. It's just, it's indescribable. Everything he does is just amazing. I really look up to him. <laughs> is a really unique racetrack for me because that's where I won my first Nextel Cup Series race. We've struggled there over the past couple of years for whatever reason, and it's just been kind of a, a thorn in our side, but it's a, it's a fun racetrack to race on, and it's definitely one of the fastest racetracks. The Atlanta Motor Speedway is one of the best racetracks we run on, and it's a place that my team knows that I can excel. So when we go there, there's a lot of energy because we can contend to win. Me and my raggedy suit is golden, gray. It's like some of your all over. <laughs> That's what happens when it's a year, year and a half old. You can't afford to buy a new one? No. On a budget, building a house. Todd's my crew chief, but Todd is more like a brother. Todd was suspended because he didn't have all the gas in the fuel tank at, um, at Las Vegas during qualifying. And, and the rule is that you have to have a uh, full tank of fuel. With Todd being gone, it's going to be tough to win. Todd ultimately did something, you know, that he shouldn't have done. There were some, some things that were illegal in the car. And, you know, you, you break the rules and you're going to get in trouble, and that's what happened. But there's such a depth to that 29 team. You know, Scott Miller's on that box every week with Todd. He knows what, what goes on. He knows these guys. So far, I really haven't felt sad or emotional at all about this being my last year in Nextel Cup competition. I'm pretty much just charged up about going after this championship. It's very important to me to be able to go out on top of my game.
straightaway. Car around. Right for you. Go, 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 go. You all good? I just uh, checked the right side. Just barely touched me. It's a big one. Good for Good job, man. To me, the start of a race is always the most tense time. There are 43 cars just smashed in together. In Atlanta, with the wreck on lap one, there were a lot of cars that were torn up, and we're very fortunate that Kevin got through it. All we have, Miller, is the Goodyear is rubbed a little bit on the right rear tire is off. Somebody got to the back of the 41, it looked like, but I couldn't tell, tell who. I saw was the damn 41 doing a tank slapper back there. There was a big wreck at the very start of the race. Lucky for me, we didn't qualify 25th, like we do a lot of times. So we were in front of it. And we go back to green to begin lap six. Single file restart, Ryan Newman out front. Getting settled in, my car always handles bad and always gets better as the race goes on. We start passing cars and, you know, we got up into the top 10 right away. Mark Martin moves up on Ryan Newman. That is eighth place. I like going to see my dad race. I want to learn. I want to be like my dad and just be a good racer, a good, clean racer. Mark Martin, good top five run. Those guys gained two positions. Just to focus today on no mistakes. We can win this race if we don't have any problems here. running that great from the time we unloaded. When your car's handling bad, you have to try to make adjustments and get it to the point where we could drive it good. You know, the Childress team that has been carrying the banner for most of the season already has been Kevin Harvick. So strong at Fontana, very strong at Las Vegas last week, but he's been somewhat struggling. He's one lap down back at 25th position. But remember, they are working without their crew chief, Todd Barrier. The caution, from the caution. Debris going into turn one. Hey, Kevin, we're going to go down two of the track bar. You think you need wedge on top of that? I don't think so. Guys, I just can't drive it. I mean, the front end turns so good that you ain't going to do nothing with the back until we kill some of the front. With Todd being gone, it was um, definitely different to communicate than what I was used to. I've been with Todd since 1999, and to not have him on the radio was definitely hard. Keep it tight. Keep it tight. We all pulled together and, and tried to make the best out of a bad situation. Still too free, Kevin, or do we get you tight there? No, it's still too free. Come back to you. Hit your marks, buddy. Hit your marks. We would always lose one or two positions on every restart, and then our car would start getting stronger and stronger, and we'd march past those guys. Of 30, you're just better than the leader, man. You're the man. This is Mark Martin. It seems like his car is getting stronger and stronger as this race unfolds. And these long green flags, uh, Larry, is what takes its toll on an engine here. Doing an awesome job, man. We can win this thing. Pat Trison is my crew chief. And Pat and I know that we should be able to contend to win with this car. Pat Trison said it on Friday. He said, you know, we need to have long runs. That's exactly what Mark Martin needs on this final run. A long oh, trouble. Third run. one, guys. Somebody blowing up. He's not going to get it, Matt. Robbie Gordon, that would be the third race in a row that he has had engine trouble. Hello, down, turn one, blow motor, get into one. The most pivotal point in the race in Atlanta was the caution that came out with about 25 laps to go because our car had shown great potential for a long run. started to come around there. I don't know what the lap times are like compared to what we need to be, but it felt a lot better. Kevin, you're faster than everybody, but about the top three. Just keep on digging. Great job. We tried everything in the world to get it to handle right, and we got it a lot better the last couple runs of the race, so we were headed down the right road. Well, I can finally put a wheel in the thing, guys. That's what I like to hear, Kev Z. Poor there, Ricky. It ain't over yet. We can still pick up the spot. Absolutely. Sorry it took till uh, the end of the race. We're gonna Drive it. 
Mark Martin takes fourth place from the past Bush champion, Brian Vickers. All right, but one more. It's going to be another one of those fantastic Atlanta finishes. Keep getting better every week, man. You're doing an awesome job. First top five of the year, everybody. Great job. The only chance that we had to even come close to contending to win that race would be had we not got that caution. Well, awesome run, man. Thanks, man. Fourth. Yes! That's after 500 miles of racing. <laughs> Great job, Kevin. Great job. We're hanging in all day, guys. Sorry, we didn't give you something better to drive. We finished 21st. We're 12th in next Dell Cup Series points. I think all the guys did great for the circumstances that we were in with the first week without Todd. And everybody was a little bit frustrated, but nobody ever gets down on each other. We finished up fourth. We had higher expectations than that. Well, it's always better if Matt and Arlene are around, no matter what kind of frustrations or how high the highs are. We share those together. Give me food. Food, food, food. You're going to have bad weeks every once in a while. Our team is, is such a, a close-knit bunch of guys that we can go back and, and say, you know, it wasn't a great weekend, but we're going to run good next week. And it didn't turn out with the greatest results, but probably drew us closer together as a bunch.